Good morning and welcome. Happy Easter to all of you. My name is Chris Steele. I'm the rector of St. Christopher's Church, and I'm very pleased that you're with us today. I want to thank all of you who are with us for the first time, with us for the first time in a while. A couple of things that I want to make sure that we have uh, ready. If, if we have a little kid in here that needs to um, have some time to roam around, we have a room in the back that has the microphone. You're also free to roam around. We like having uh, people here. So we're very glad that uh, those younger visitors with us are here today. Uh, if you came in and you did not get one of the little glass cups, that is the way that uh, we do the wine at communion time. I'll say more about how we do communion uh, at, uh, after the sermon, right before we, we have, have the offertory. Uh, but that's the way we do it. If you don't have one and, uh, and would like to participate with that, at the offertory, just please let one of the ushers know, and they will uh, they'll make sure that you get one for that. Our opening hymn this morning is number 180, number 180. Well, guys, 
going to say a prayer with you guys before you go. The Lord Jesus, may the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, may open your ears to hear his word and open your lips to speak his praises to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll see you guys in just a little bit. says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me in unison as we recite Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. 
I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Today the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, 
but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where, they have, where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told him all that, that, he, uh, that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Some of you who know me know that I'm a runner, and so this is my favorite of the resurrection accounts because it has what we call the apostolic foot race, right? John, the author of this gospel, is commonly, commonly refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved, right? Because he wants us all to know that he is the favorite. He also wants us to know that he's the fastest runner among the bunch. Because as he and Peter start running, he's the one who gets there first. We know that because he tells us twice. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I love this particular version of it. The other is this encounter with Mary. I don't know that, I, I haven't quite figured out. I try when I read the gospel aloud, I try not to, not to dramatize it, but try to get something of the feel of what's being said there. I still haven't been able to put my finger on, woman, why are you weeping? There's, there's not a way in this translation to make that sound as, as tender as it must have been. But the question Jesus asks to Mary is important. Why are you weeping? And more importantly, whom is it that you see? The 
question really is, what are you looking for? What have you come expecting to find? It's a fair question for Mary. She has obviously come to find Jesus, but not obviously in the right place. Jesus has talked about his resurrection throughout his teaching, yet somehow, they're not stupid, they didn't like, misunderstand this, but how do we interpret that? So the question is, why is she there in the garden, at the tomb, looking for Jesus? It's a fair question to her, and it's a fair question to each one of us. To say, what are you expecting to find here? And I, and I ask you that. What are you expecting to find when you come here? And I'm not asking that in a snarky way. Because I also struggle with that question. What is it we're expecting to find when we come to look for Jesus? It's not off-brand for us to say that you can find Jesus here. But can we recognize him based on what we're looking for? And I think nine times out of ten, we ourselves don't know exactly what it is we are looking for. We've heard about the resurrection, that Jesus is no longer dead but alive. But Jesus is not someone like a fairy tale prince or princess who has outsmarted death or outsmarted the trickster. He's not the hero of a thousand faces that takes on death and finally figures out a way around it. No, Jesus takes death's best shot. And not only comes out victorious for himself, but defeats death forever. That is not something we can get our heads around. It's not something that we in ourselves really know how to look for. So if we don't know, why, why do we come? Why are we here? What are we in fact looking for? And the fact is, the apostles didn't know, Mary does not know, and I don't know that we know. So why? What's the point? I think the point is that it really isn't up to us to know exactly what it is that our hearts and that our spirits need. We don't need to know. It'd be nice. It'd be nice to know all that we were desiring, all that was true and good, and what was best for us. But it turns out we don't have to know. Abraham did not have to know where he was going when God said, take your family and go to a land where I will show you. The exiles did not have to know how long or where they were going when they would be called back and restored as God's people. How do we know then? Well, it is in what Jesus says. And I think this is actually the tenderest word Jesus ever speaks. Mary says, tell me where you have laid him, instead of explaining, instead of telling her what to do next, what is his only thing to say, he calls her by her name, Mary. She calls him teacher. That's what she 
is looking for. Whether she knows it or not. God that calls her by her name. Jesus who knows who she is. And where she can be found. Often we walk through our lives thinking that we are going after exactly the right thing. And there are no shortage of people who will tell us what we ought to be looking for. If anyone short of an angel of the Lord dressed in white tries to tell you that, they are probably lying to you. But I will say, keep seeking Keep looking for the risen Lord. And it will not be because you have found the right path. It will be because Jesus has called each one of you by your name. And I will tell you that he has, each one of you. The apostles, the disciples share in this resurrection on that first day. Not because they have found the secret. Not because they have understood the philosophy. Not because they have followed the steps. The apostles, Mary, and you and I share in this resurrection. In not just outwitting death, but defeating death. Because Jesus calls each one of you by name. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all have. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly Let us pray for our own needs 
and those of others. For the repose of the soul of Julia. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and grant us the vision of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome everyone. Happy Easter. We have our friends that are on their way back. Here they go. Here they come. There she is. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Yes. Uh, so, once again, a uh, welcome, and so, I'm so glad you've joined us today. A couple of things uh, that we'll, um, that I just want you to be aware of. First of all, I need to grab this. Uh, if you're joining us today for the first time, or if you haven't been getting uh, our uh, announcements and things like this, there should be one of these uh, green cards in your pew. It's white on the other side. Uh, if, if you'd like to know what's going on from week to week around here, there's a lot that we actually do here that's really a lot of, of fun and very uh, informative for us. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, please let us know your contact information, your name, email, phone number if you'd like to. And we would love to put you uh, in touch with us and let you know all the things coming up. One thing coming up this week that's very important, uh, on Tuesday, the approach, which is our Zoom Bible study, is taking a different uh, ta um, a different direction this week. Uh, we've been asked by the City of University Park uh, to be the host for a number of the pastors of University Park to come on and talk about what it means for us as churches to be advocates and support for mental health, especially among children. So. That will be the approach. We'll send, we'll, we send out a link to that every Monday. So if you'd like to be a part of that, I'd encourage you to, to uh, let us know your email and your contact information. You can be a part of that. Next weekend, all the churches in University Park will be speaking on some level about uh, mental health and mental wellness uh, in their churches and how we can be a support for that. All after church, we have... Uh, Quite a spread set up across the way, and so I encourage all of you to come and uh, be a part of that. Enjoy. This is this is our Super Bowl. This is the big celebration of the Christian year. This is what we what we are about. Every other Sunday is a miniature version of this. This is the day. This is in fact the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad, and we have got all kinds of goodies to make sure we are rejoicing and being glad across the way. And thanks to everyone who put such an effort into that. All baptized Christians are invited and encouraged to come to communion. And uh, so even, from biggest to smallest, we, uh, we ask that uh, for parents, if you have a child that you're bringing forward, we ask you, you can make that decision for yourself and for your child. Uh, but again, in the Episcopal Church, all that's required is bapti baptism for that. And so when you come forward, uh, just bring, come place your hands, uh, especially a little it's like a little table and you'll give, be given a piece of the consecrated bread and once again as I mentioned before the service we have those small cups where we distribute the consecrated wine if for any reason you would not like to, to receive communion we still invite you to come forward simply cross your arms over your chest like this and that's our indication that you'd like to receive a blessing instead um, we believe that this is the Lord's table and not an Episcopal one, and so you are welcome. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh. 
supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of you. <coughs> Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you, and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 207. Number 207.
again, everyone. And again, we have quite a big spread across the way. We are going to leave the candles lit and the lights on for a little while in case we got a lot of families here. If you'd like to take some Easter photos, that's going to be all open to you as well. But I'll, we'll see you over across the way. I look forward to seeing it. Thank you, everyone. Happy Easter.